Hi, I'm Jennifer. Welcome to Orton Gillingham Coaching. Today we want to talk about closed syllables and teaching strategies for closed syllables. Um, initial terms, a student must know what a vowel and consonant are to, go, to get the concept of closed syllables, but they don't necessarily need to know completely what syllable means yet. They'll start getting that, um, but you do want to be able to say, use the word syllable and say something like, um, that consonant at the end is what's closing that vowel in. It's making the vowel short. It's a closed syllable. Um, if they do want to know what a syllable is, if you're asked, or if you want to give the definition of a syllable at this point, if your student is mature enough, then you could say words are made of syllables, or you could say a syllable is the part of a word with a vowel in it. Those are two common definitions for especially younger children. But once a student knows a word like at or in, you can start saying that vowel is short because the consonant of the N is closing it in. It's a closed syllable. It's making the vowel short. You can start to get that determined to the student. Um, so what is a closed syllable? It is the CVC pattern, consonant, vowel, consonant pattern. That's why a student does need to know what a consonant and vowel is. But it is also very important to say that it is the ending, the end consonant that is making the vowel short, that's closing it in. It's way more common to have a consonant, vowel, consonant syllable than it is just to have a vowel consonant. But it is that ending consonant, consonant that is making the vowel short, and it's important to acknowledge that. How fast you could teach closed syllables is really depends on the maturity of your student, but repetition is gonna be very important. Um, I've tutored kids who know the consonants of vowels, they know their sounds, but when you try to put them in a pattern, CVC, and tell them that that is the consonant is closing the vowel in and making it short, it becomes a little confusing. So different activities will help make this less tedious, but you probably will need some repetition. During all these activities, it's a great time if you have any of your multi-sensory tools like sandpaper letters or you want to use sand trays or shaving cream. It's a great time in any of these to get those out and use them. Um, I have a link below to some sandpaper letters that I think are cool and uh, some trays and sand as well. One of the first activities I like to do with students is, this is from my scope and sequence workbook, a page from my scope and sequence and uh, workbook, and I like to have them go through and just label vowel consonant and have them read each word after they label it. So I know that they are understanding which one's the vowel, which one's the consonant. And then you, that's when you can ask questions as well. Why is that vowel short? It's closing it in. The, the consonant's making it closed in. It's making it short. So this is a good way to just make sure they're understanding vowels and which one's the vowel, which one's the consonant. And it, it, it's really just an exercise to go through and say vowel, consonant, consonant, vowel, consonant, consonant, vowel, consonant, consonant. You know, it's repetition. Also, be sure to do nonsense words as well. That's important not to just do actual words. Another activity you could do is have these cards cut out. I put these on a little bit heavier stock, again, from my Scope and Secrets workbook. You can leave it in strips, or you can put it on little cards and just have them, or you could do it on big cards too. You don't have to do it on these little cards. Uh, but just have them read cards. Just read the words and go through words. You can have a list of words. Oops, that's upside down. Uh, but just, just going through reading cards. You should also be dictating words. That's another activity. This is a list of words. You have a list of real words and a list of nonsense words. And you should never skip the auditory portion. A student should be able to hear what they're seeing and what they're writing. Another exercise you could do is we tell the student that a brev is what we how we indicate a short vowel. And you have the student go through and mark each vowel with the brev, each short vowel with a brev, and then read the word. And you could do it as something as simple as this and go through or something a little more. This is from my workbook one, uh, OG for all workbook one. And you, or you could have them go through something like this that has a lot more. Uh, and you even have some space for dictation down here. So just, it's just another way to make it less tedious, but having some writing and marking the brev and then reading the syllables. Once a student understands the concept that 
a vowel is short because a consonant's closing it in, and you can start to put two syllables next to one another. And then they read each syllable, and it's an actual word. For instance, napkin, cabin, basket. Um, so you say basket, cabin. And then once you're working on blends, you can start to do words like dentist, flat tin, contest. So you are not just working on your CVC, you're also working on your blends at the same time. And I also want to make a note that be sure to do dictation in these, not just seeing it and writing it. Dictation is extremely important in these. And, and when you are doing the dictation, you have to be very clear. For I want to use the word dentist, for example. It's very easy for dentist to sound like dentist. It's dentist. So we want to be sure to be very clear. Den so also sounds like an I. So you might have to say de e n de e n to get the syllable across when you're doing dictation. You have to sometimes pronounce words the way they aren't necessarily pronounced really so that the dictation can be heard. And that's an important thing. So den can sound like D-I-N because e and, e and I sound very much alike. So you might have to say den tist even though we pronounce it, pronounce it dentist. It is important to, for you as the teacher to pronounce the syllables and the, when you're doing dictation, pronounce the letters very clearly for them to understand. It can be tricky. Even a word like am, they might hear a E. So you have to, you might have to say a, m, a, m. So you have to be very clear what the vowel sound or consonant sound is. And you cannot say a, m. You have to say a, m, a, m because it's m, not m, and they can, they'll write m if you're not clear. So I just want to point that out. I think it's important. Another activity we could do is with these longer two-syllable words next to each other, we still have the students label the vowels and consonants and then pronounce, and then we still also have them put the brevs over the two syllables and, in, no, and pronounce each syllable. Just as a final word, remember that teaching closed syllables, a student has nothing to compare syllable types to yet, but they will soon. Soon they'll be having magic E syllables and then they'll see the concept much clearer. And then when they get to VCCV words, rabbit words, they will really understand the syllable types. And once they see open syllables, it becomes very clear that you can have a vowel, but not just a consonant. So once again, OG is cumulative and each lesson's building on the other, and this is uh, no exception. So thank you for watching, and I hope you'll stay tuned for the next video.